Lurking in the depths of a handful of southeast Queensland's rivers, a mysterious inhabitant is coming to light. An animal so successful at survival, it's remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. It has fins that look like legs, armor-like scales, a fully functioning lung, and can breathe on land. It is thought to be the oldest surviving relative of all terrestrial vertebrates that paved the way for land-based evolution and eventually resulted in us. But how does our modern day use of Australia's valuable river systems affect this remarkable creature? As we dam our waterways, extract their water, and alter our riparian landscapes, can this living fossil survive any longer? This is the story of the Australian lungfish. Hi there, my name's Dr. David Roberts and I'm a fisheries scientist with SEQ Water. I've been working here for about 15 years. We're working today on the Brisbane River. This is the home of the Australian lungfish and we're working on a project to restore some of the habitat lost in the river over the years. The Australian lungfish is thought to have evolved up to 100 million years ago, which is pre-dinosaurs. They're such an amazing fish, they have so many features that no other fish have. Things like a single lung, as well as gills, so they can breathe air when they need to. They have enamel on their teeth, which is much like what we have on our teeth. That's also very rare. They also have an amazing feature, which is called the lobed fins. And they belong to a group of fish, there's only a handful of them that have these lobed fins. And what they are, is instead of having thin bones like a fish has, they actually have limb structures. And some believe they're just like the precursors to our own bones and limbs. So lungfish are a generalist feeder. They don't specifically target anything. They just grub around the bottom and eat all sorts of things that they can catch. Mostly what they eat is shellfish like snails and mussels, but they'll also eat other things that might fall in the river like fruits from the riparian zones. They have an amazing digestive system unlike most other fish where they can hold food in their stomach for a lot longer than other fish and digest things like plant material. Lungfish are a long-lived species. We've aged them up to 70 years old in the wild, but we know they live much longer in captivity. In fact, one famous lungfish in an American aquarium has lived well over 100 years. Lungfish have very specific needs when it comes to their breeding cycle. They need nice plant material growing in the gently flowing stretches of the river. And the reason that is, is their eggs can take up to three weeks to hatch. And then the young fry that hatch out of the eggs are pretty much immobile for another three weeks. So for all that time, they need the protection and cover of nice plant material in the river or they may not survive. Lungfish grow pretty large too. They're one of our largest freshwater fish in Australia. They've been recorded upwards of 1.5 metres long, but more typically they're around 1 to 1.2 metres and can weigh up to 25 kilograms. They're quite a long fish, uh, much like an eel, but a lot rounder and thicker. They're generally a brown colour on top, that may help with camouflage, but they have a nice orange golden underbelly that often gets darker as they breed. They also have quite a unique face. They have large fleshy lips and two teeth, which are essentially like two large crushing plates that rub together and crush their food. So the range of Australian lungfish is pretty much restricted to southeast Queensland, extending from Brisbane River up to the Burnett River. And originally they only occurred in the Mary and the Burnett River, but back when they were discovered, there was concern that they may become extinct, so they were translocated to other rivers in southeast Queensland. And that includes the Brisbane River where we are today. Lungfish are protected both internationally and in Australia. They're covered by a unique piece of legislation called CITES, which is a protection status only afforded to very vulnerable species. Things on par like rhinoceroses and elephants. And that restricts the trade of these fish across the world because one of the threats identified for lungfish was poaching from the wild. They're also protected in Australia under national and international legislation including our Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. This prevents anyone doing harm that could potentially reduce a population or affect them in some way. And our local state fisheries also prohibit the catching of lungfish. Through my role at SEQ Water, we've been able to do a whole range of new research on this important species, revealing a lot of facts that we never knew about before. 
and we've used that information to understand what really matters for lungfish and it comes down to habitat and ensuring that habitat is maintained in good quality. The habitat of lungfish is pretty much slow flowing rivers much like what we see here today. They do like to breed in the shallow running sections of the river because that provides the habitat and the oxygen to help their eggs and young survive. And so the diversity of those habitats in a river is really important where you have both deep, slow flowing pools but also the shallow running sections of river and plenty of riparian shade so the water doesn't become too warm. Lungfish are quite tolerant of a range of water quality conditions. They don't like salinity at all. That's why they live in the upper reaches only. But they're pretty tolerant. They can stand poor water quality at times because they have after all developed the lung to enable them to breathe in, in poor water quality. But the young are very sensitive, particularly the eggs and the unhatched fry. And it's important to make sure during the breeding season, the water quality is good. Habitat is so important for lungfish. It's where they feed and breed. And things like waterway declines, in health, loss of vegetation on waterways, they all contribute to the reduction in habitat quality. We also have the problem of large dams which can flood preferred habitats of lungfish. And while they'll live just fine in a large impoundment, they don't do so well in terms of breeding. So we really need to protect those remaining riverine habitats to ensure the population doesn't decline. I'm Mark Ward, a Program Manager with Healthy Land and Water. We're on Lowood Bend, a section of the Mid-Brisbane River downstream of the town of Lowood. Uh, we're here on a private property looking to restore some lungfish habitat. This program identified that the lungfish habitat through the Mid-Brisbane River uh, downstream of the Wyvernho Dam was compromised uh, through the 2011 and 2013 floods. So what we're looking to do is re-establish this submerged aquatic grass uh, called Vallisneria throughout some key sections of the Mid-Brisbane River. So that's been scoured from that landscape uh, for some years and uh, would normally sort of restore itself through propagules floating downstream. That hasn't happened, so we're looking to get some key locations so that this grass can re-establish itself throughout the river system. So what that looks like is we've harvested Vallisneria from a location on the Mid-Brisbane River. We've set up a whole bunch of ponds at Wyvernho Dam where we've put in half a metre of water, laid some coir mat. So coir is a coconut fibre, it's a natural fibre. So we've laid this down on the bottom of these ponds. Uh, we've put this grass, Vallisneria, on top of that coir matting and then we've poured some sand on top of that. And that's been propagating in those ponds for uh, about six months. So when that gets nice and dense and we get a good coverage of this Vallisneria and a good root mass in there, we pull it out of those ponds and we come down to locations like this and we put them in the riverbed. And we'll pin them down with a combination of biodegradable pins made from cornstarch and rocks from the riverbed. Trying to get a nice attachment of those mats to the riverbed so those roots that are in those mats can penetrate into the river substrate. G'day, Jack McCann's my name. I'm the Waterway Health Officer for Ipswich City Council. So Council currently has a big interest in waterway health and improving the health of our waterways here in Ipswich. Around three or four years ago, a large barrier prioritisation project was undertaken right across South East Queensland and identified a number of fish passage barriers impacting the migrations of our native species. This barrier here was Berries Weir and it ranked as one of the highest priorities through all of the catchments in South East Queensland requiring remediation for juvenile migratory fish, as well as our potamodromous freshwater fish, which live their whole life cycle in freshwater, such as our lungfish. So Australian fish, unlike their northern counterparts, aren't really great jumpers or fantastic swimmers, and they actually can't really jump barriers to get to upstream habitats. So it's really important that we have basically underwater highways for fish to swim up to get upstream, such as a fishway. So there's lots of obvious barrier types that we're probably all familiar with, such as dams and weirs, but there's a lot of less obvious barriers throughout the landscape that people don't really associate as being fish barriers, such as bridges, culvert crossings, footpaths, anything that crosses a waterway that basically has some sort of surface drop or vertical drop from the upstream to the downstream side is essentially a waterway barrier and can have big impacts, even though it might appear small, something as high as 200 mil might have immense impacts on the fish communities of that, of that system. So prior to the fishway being built, it was a 2.8 metre high weir impounding water behind us here in Berries Lagoon. So in late 2016, the fishway was constructed over the course of three weeks, constructed purely of rock, but then also of concrete. So it's quite an intricate task to allow 100 mil drops between each of the pools of the fishway to basically make up the 2.8 metre height to ascend the weir. So as part of the fishway monitoring, some baseline fish community monitoring was also conducted upstream and downstream of the fishway. 
and this was the first time that we had confirmed captures of lungfish here in the Bremer River. Interestingly, we didn't actually catch any lungfish upstream of the fishway, which potentially shows the impact that the barrier was having on lungfish and their populations uh, and I guess their access up and down the Bremer River. So it's hoped now that the fishway has now opened up a large section of previously unreachable habitat to the lungfish uh, that they can now access. So overall something like this fishway doesn't have immense costs associated with it when compared with many other projects but it has immense environmental benefits. The Australian lungfish is such a special species to have in our backyard its evolutionary significance can't be understated. It's commonly believed that they were the precursors to all land animals on Earth. So it truly is deserving of the tag of a living fossil. What's really important is the hard work and efforts that people like Healthy Land and Water are doing in conjunction with SQ Water to restore habitat that's so critical for the species. It's only through these efforts that we're going to ensure that the lungfish survives for many more years to come.